Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, and today we're here with uh, Brantley Milligan, who is the Director of Operations at ENS. Uh, can you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I, I live in Springfield, Oregon. Go Ducks! Uh, I'm married with five children. Wow, I'm proud of that. Congratulations! Um, and ENS is uh, taking over the world. At least that's the plan. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so how busy is your day now on an average day doing everything you're doing for, uh, for ENS? Yeah, it's busy. I mean, our whole team is busy. Uh, you know, our, our ambitions are huge. So, you know, yeah. we, we think, you know, ENS is, uh, is, is, is naming infrastructure that uses blockchain technology. It's not a namespace. And I, I can explain this more, more later. It's infrastructure mm -hmm. that can actually support any names and our long-term goal you know, is, 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 you know, we'll, we'll first, you know, complement and support and expand the usefulness of the domain name system, but we want to eventually upgrade, upgrade and replace the infrastructure of the whole domain name system. So there's lots to do. Um, and so we're very busy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but uh, my next question is, can you give my audience a brief introduction to what ENS actually is and its Ethereum naming service? If, uh, if, People didn't know what the acronym was. Exactly. So Ethereum name service. Uh, and we're actually considering possibly rebranding away from that, uh, but we'll we'll see. But so so what does this name mean? Well, first we'll start with name service. So what is a name service? People don't think about name services on the internet. Uh, there's the domain name system that just kind of works in the background. And what what a naming system or service does is it just maps human readable names to computer identifiers. So what works makes sense to computers doesn't make sense to humans. It's just a bridge. It's all it is. It's very simple. And it's just a lookup system. So you have, you have a name and you have records attached to it. That's it. People tend to overcomplicate it. Yeah. Um, so for example, like when you go to google.com in your browser, what your computer is doing is it connects to the domain name system, which tells it where to find the Google website, and then it connects to the Google website. Uh, in our case, uh, let's say you're sending Bitcoin to somebody. It connects to your, your wallet, connects to ENS, grabs the Bitcoin address, but then your wallet sends the, the, the transaction along. Some people think that we send the transaction. We don't. We're just, we're just the information system. Yeah. So that's what a, a name service is. And uh, a name service that can name one thing can actually name anything. So we not only do cryptocurrency wallet address naming, and we're the leaders in that by, by a long shot, uh, but we also do uh, decentralized websites. We have, a, we have a partnership with Protocol Labs, which run IPFS. Uh, we also do Tor.onion address naming, and we're actually even working on doing traditional DNS records. We have some experimental projects coming up. Okay. So that's, that's a name service. So why are we called the Ethereum name service? Uh, because we are a name service that runs on Ethereum. So some people think that it means that we're a name service like that on, is only for the Ethereum community, not true. We can we serve everything, you know. Uh, but the logic of it runs on the Ethereum blockchain. But but really, that's just like a back end thing that the user doesn't even have to know. Mm. So that's what we are. Is that, is that is that part of why you're thinking of rebranding? Because people are thinking that it's like restricted to Ethereum. Because I actually kind of thought that too originally that it might have only worked for Ethereum wallets, and that's why I was kind of like, oh, like I don't know if Unstoppable might be better in the future. But like clearly, it seems like you guys are are taking over the whole market for this? Yeah, good question. You know, so when ENS launched, it launched two and a half years ago. And I don't, I, I don't know how long you've been in the space. or not, were, were, were you in the space three, you know, two and a half years ago? Yeah, like like right around the crash is when I kind of got in, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, I've been around for a little over two years now. Okay, great. So, so you know, two and a half years ago, this was early 2017. It was a different world. Let me tell you. Yeah, this is kind of at the beginning of the ICO world, and we were not firmly in the multi-coin world that we are in today. Mm -hmm. And um, so when Ethereum started, it did sort of mostly focus on the Ethereum community, but that's because it was a different landscape. Uh, but now, of course, we've expanded and we support everything. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that's, that's so important because... Um, like like one of the things that I went over in my video I thought was really interesting was 
so many people will send uh, to a wrong address if they you know mistype it or something like that. But when you have the human readable address, it will always send to the correct address. And if you type in the wrong human readable address, it'll say this isn't the right address. So then you avoid issues like that. And I thought that was huge. Um, can, can you name some of the other benefits or share some of the other benefits of, of, of a human readable address? Oh, absolutely. Well, one, uh, you could say to your friend, hey, send me $100 in cryptocurrency and just with that name, say, hey, send it to Brantley.eth or whatever. Um, and they can send to any cryptocurrency that you have in your records. So like I have at Brantley.eth, I have not only an Ethereum address, but I also have Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, BNB, Dogecoin, whatever. And with that one piece of information, Brantley.eth, they can send me to any, any, any of those. Uh, yeah. So that's way simpler. It kind of manages it all for you. Uh, but uh, there, there's a lot beyond that. So we do decentralized websites with IPFS. Um, and then we, all, we even have text records. We can put personal information, your Twitter handle or something, or an avatar. So okay. uh, there, there's um, many possibilities here. Kind of, kind of a vision we have of the future. So our, our, our plan to... Ex our next kind of big thing is to expand the namespace on ENS by integrating the DNS namespace. And we've already done this with .xyz, .cred, .art, uh, .lux, and, and some others. Um, but we actually plan on rolling that out to the rest of the DNS namespace in the next few months. Okay. What this means is like, let's say there's ethereum.org. Ethereum.org can use DNS for its website, because that's what everybody you know, uses. But it could use receive cryptocurrency with Ethereum.org using ENS. From a user perspective, that means means I can go to Ethereum.org and get a website, and I can send cryptocurrency to Ethereum.org, and it just works all for the same name. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's like um, a payment layer for the web. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And um, so, so how many wallets currently do, does this support? Because I know that was a big issue that I had with unstoppable domains was when I originally, like before I learned about ENS, I was like, okay, this is awesome. But then I realized like nothing really worked with it. There was just a few wallets that I'd never even heard of. So I was like, okay, well, I guess this isn't really going to solve this problem for me. And then I found ENS and I was like, well, okay, well, this works with like MetaMask and a lot of like major wallets. So could you just share some of the uh, wallets that it does work with, like well-known ones, because I'm probably sure there's a lot to uh, to list off. Oh yeah, no, I mean we have 40 wallets now that either have wow. it integrated or who have committed publicly to integrating it very soon. So okay. like ones that currently have it integrated are like Trust Wallet, MetaMask, you know, My Crypto, you know, My Ether Wallet, Status. Um, I mean, and we have a whole list on our website. We're actually adding to it all the time. You know, Burner Wallet. Uh, lot, lots of projects do that. Uh, and then we have uh, a number of wallets that have committed to, to integrating it. So like Coinbase Wallet, uh, they plan on having that by the end of the year, so in the next couple of weeks. Okay, uh, awesome. Like IM Token already has it. Uh, oh, the Bitcoin.com wallet is integrating it. That, okay. that was a huge coup for us because they actually don't even support Ethereum as a, um, as a cryptocurrency, but they're going to use us for their naming for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Because remember, it's just That's infrastructure awesome. in the background. Yep. So we actually have lists of this on our blog. Um, so about 40 uh, have I have either integrated or have signed up to integrate very soon. Yeah. Wow. That is that is awesome. So what are some of the next big updates coming out for ENS? I know you talked a little bit about what's coming out, but uh, what are some of the next big updates for people to look out for? Yeah, so, so like I said, the big next big update is integration of the DNS namespace. And this is, I, I, this is really important to our whole strategy for what I already mentioned, right? But also because um, what a lot of people don't understand is the value. So, so names on, on a naming system, right, are socially contingent, right? So if you own scott.com, what does that mean? You only own scott.com because the rest of the world agrees that you do. That's it. There's no technological, you know, thing preventing somebody else from, you know, spinning up a DNS server that says they own scott.com. And now there's a debate about, you know, which one you should what you should use when you go to scott.com. You know, which record is the, is the mm -hmm. correct one? It, it's a social contract. 
So this is unlike computer identifiers. So like a computer identifier, like a cryptocurrency address, you can just generate these and it doesn't really matter who has which one, right? Because there's, there's no other social value uh, to it. Mm -hmm. but, but human readable names there is. So where I'm going with this is it's very important that the whole internet, the whole world agrees on the, the, the same canonical namespace. Now, there is an organization that, that some, some of your listeners may have heard of that is dedicated to that process. It's called ICANN, the Internet Corporation for the Assignment of Numbers and Names. It's a massive nonprofit. They have three conferences a year plus smaller ones. You, anybody can go. I actually just got back from one in Montreal. Okay. Uh, it was huge. They do that. All this is, and then they, it's so like if we wanted to create a new top level domain like dot wallet or dot ICO, they have a process by which you can do that. Where I'm going with this is that we could just create tons of new top level domains and start selling names on them. But we think that's bad for two reasons. One, if we do that, it's going to piss off the rest of the internet and they're going to be very unlikely to ever work with us because like, hey, you are a bad actor. You're not respecting our process and we're not going to respect your names. Two, um, it's bad for users because so we just let's say we create dot wallet and we start selling them to people. Well, in ICANN, somebody else might claim dot wallet and start selling them. Now you have what's called a name collision, where two different people claim to, aim, to own the same name on the internet. That's bad, right? It, it, it mm -hmm. defeats the whole point. So, so for example, within our in our case. We did create .eth, which is not in the ICANN route. However, um, we, we consider this to be sort of an experimental testing uh, testing zone. Also, it's actually in a special case uh, when it comes to ICANN. .eth is actually reserved as a three-letter country code for Ethiopia that's unused right now. So, so ICANN reserved all three-letter country codes, uh, but didn't give them to the country. So it's in this weird limbo state. And uh, we, we've actually had some communication with the, with the country of Ethiopia and we're in communication with people in ICANN to, to um, you know, if that ever became a problem, we could work it out. But but part of their willingness to work with us is we say, hey, we are not making any other top-level domains, and we want to follow the rules. And so we just want to support the current namespace. That's the big thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I say all this because other other blockchain naming projects are taking the exact opposite approach, and, and they are free to do that. Uh, we think it's a mistake. So, for example... Uh, unstoppable domains. Um, you know, they did create .zil, which you know maybe you could say make an argument. Well, they needed to get started or something like this, or that there was an experiment, place experiment. They're launching .crypto. We think this is this is very irresponsible because one, they don't have the rights to that in the traditional namespace, which means that somebody else could come along and get that in in the traditional DNS. Now you have a name collision problem, and that could actually make the name's useless for all their customers. I mean, who knows? We can't predict the future, but this is likely going to be a problem for them going forward. And two, like I said, I think it, it unnecessarily antagonizes the rest of the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, FIO, I, I think, is, is taking a similar approach. They use a different um, separator. Instead of, instead of having dot something, they use colon. I personally, I mean, I could be wrong here. I think that is a distinction without a difference. I think that they are just kind of creating this massive namespace, not, not in collaboration with the rest of the internet. I think that they may run into problems there. And then, of course, Handshake, uh, which um, I, I like the people. You know, I, I've met them, like the technology. They're, they're explicitly trying to replace ICANN. And uh, maybe they'll be successful, and congratulations if they are. Uh, and they're doing that by just creating tons of new top-level domains and hope that they become the new canonical thing. I personally think it's highly unlikely that that will happen. And again, uh, we think this is unnecessarily antagonistic. All this to say is we've decided to take a very different approach. Of we, we think the technology, the blockchain technology, can improve the current namespace. So we don't need to challenge the namespace, but we could upgrade the tech stack and bring all the benefits of blockchain technology to that. We think that's the most effective. So that was a long answer. But yeah. That's what but yeah, doing. no, that makes sense. Like you're you're working with them rather than like working against them or creating that friction. And it's also going to speed up the process rather than and you're avoiding any issues in the future. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so in a in a, like a long term 
what is it going to look like in a year from now, like ideally, and what would it look like in like five years from now? What 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 are the hopes for for what it might look like? Because obviously, a lot's going on, so it's hard to predict exactly what it would look like. But uh, ideally, yeah, I mean, ideally, in a year, we'll be uh, operating out of our headquarters on Mars, and uh, I will be a billionaire. And no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, so obviously this DNS name, full DNS namespace integration will be completely, I mean, that should be done in like two or three months, but hopefully that'll be completely, you know, we can run into problems, but hopefully that'll be completely done. And uh, we also, um, within a year, we'd love to have our DNS records experiments done and successful and maybe even rolling that out to, to further uh, use in a year. Um, we'd love to have more integration in the traditional DNS world. So we're in discussion with a number of registrars, basically for them to make it as easy as possible that if you own a traditional DNS name that you can claim the ENS record for it, you know, and, and use that for your cryptocurrency, like a one-click solution. We have many registrars interested in this. So hopefully that will be rolled out. Um, we, uh, we have some other uh, partnerships uh, major partnerships that will hopefully, you know, have had fruition in, in that time. Uh, so I, I think the, the future is very bright. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, so you, you talked about before how you guys have like the most people signed up. What does that look like right now? Like what's the user base currently? Good question. So in terms of .eth names registered, we have about 310,000 second level domains registered. Um, how many people that represents um that hard is to tell, I guess. hard to tell obviously uh but i would you know tens of thousands and um i would estimate and then we also that doesn't count like subdomain owners so so there's a lot of people who just get subdomains for free because they're they're much easier and cheaper to have so like i know eric connor uh, from eth hub he he got ethmojis.eth and then he he gives out for like ten dollars you can buy like an emoji subdomain. So you can get like an emoji dot eth emojis dot eth. And that, that can be fun. Uh, so there's tons of those that that's not counting. So, you know, thousands more of those. And then we'd also have the, some of the DNS namespace integration already. So uh, I don't have a number off the top of my head for that, but we have that. Okay. Uh, but I would say, but it's growing fast. It's a, it's a fast growing industry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, um, like, what are other potential future use cases for ENS? Like, other than what we talked about, is there anything else that we might see sometime in the future, maybe in, in the far future? What, what would that maybe look like? Yeah, well, you know, the cool thing about naming is that a name system that can name one thing can actually name anything. So it just comes down to s making a standardized record type and then getting adoption for it. That's all it is. I mean, even right now, ENS... We could do phone numbers, your mailing address, your, you know, your PGP key. We could do, you know, we've had requests, you know, for some of these things. It just comes down to somebody making a standard for, you know, what should this record look like? How should it work? You know, maybe writing an EIP or something for it, uh, having comments, and then just implementing it in our system, which is not hard to do, and then getting, um, you know, the relevant clients, you know, and, and players to use it. So uh, yeah, I mean, like a PGP key, I think that would be awesome. Like you know, put the put your public key. I actually just yeah. had a meeting earlier today with the CEO of Three Box. They want to have okay. a special record for the three three ID. And uh, but you know, a cool thing about ENS is it's open source. So um, I work for an organization called True Names Limited, which is just a nonprofit that's received a grant from the Ethereum Foundation, and we're just sort of like the de facto managers of it. But uh, we receive lots of contributions from other people. And anybody, if they have an idea, they can offer that or even just you know, write the code, submit a pull request, and then you can go down in history as the guy who added uh, PGP public key support to ENS. Um, and we've had people do this. So for example, we support Tor.onion addresses now. That came yep. out of a uh, East New York hackathon project. Oh, they okay. figured out how it would work. They submit it now. It works in MetaMask and in ENS. So if you have the Tor browser, you have MetaMask enabled. You can go to a, you can type in a .eth name, and if there's a Tor.onion address there, it will go to that. Yeah, wow, that's that's awesome. You guys are really just integrating tons of different things, and I think it's really key that it's it's open source too. 
encourage more uh, more development and, and more people to contribute. Um, so are we going to see any anyone from the team at any events coming up soon? Uh, what, what is that going to look like over the next like year or so? Yeah, and actually, real quick on, on the last point. As a nonprofit, this is a differentiator. So, so some of our competitors, you know, I'm not against for-profit models, uh, but they are for-profit companies, uh, which gives them a different incentive structure. Our opinion is that naming infrastructure is more of a public good and shouldn't be like owned or, or proprietary. Um, yeah. And so that's why we think it's, it's, pu- it's open source, it's public domain, we're nonprofit, anybody can contribute. Uh, we, that's, we think that's, that's the right path. Um, in, ter- in terms of events, you know, uh, we were actually at a lot of events this year. So we were at uh, almost all of the ETH Global events. We had representatives. Uh, we were at lots of conferences around the world and in multiple continents. Uh, we haven't put together our travel schedule for next year yet, but I'm sure that people will see us at events. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone make sure to look out for these guys. So were, were um, you, were, did you go to DevCon or anything like that yourself? Uh, no, I didn't, unfortunately, but I'll try to go next year. Um, can you share with everyone then where they can go to learn more about this and where they can go and get signed up with their own uh, .eth address? Yeah, so um, if you go to app dot ens dot domains that is our manager and you can register a dot eth name there and you can set the records do everything there and you can do that in any ethereum compatible browser so metamask uh on desktop or in the metamask um, uh, mobile app or or status uh you know or anything else that's ethereum uh you know the coinbase wallets all these will of course work and uh if you if you want to claim like a dot xyz name we have a we have a guide for that if if you if you already own it on dns just type it into our manager and it will explain the process that you have to go through it's a little tricky right now we're trying to simplify it but it is possible to do okay and uh, if you know follow us on twitter oh and if you get a dot eth name or you know put it in your twitter handle and you will be cool like vitalik <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'll have to uh, to update my Twitter handle then. Um, so b- before we leave this off, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share with everyone? Yeah, um, I would say, uh, you know, join the revolution. This is, uh, you know, I think an inspiring thing about blockchain technology in general is that it has the potential to massively transform our world in many domains. So that's why it kind of inspires people, right? It's it's a people get really into blockchain technology, and yeah. you know ENS. Uh, I think it has the potential to becoming the new and naming infrastructure of the whole internet. I mean, who knows if that'll happen? But it has that potential, and we're here for it. So you know, join in. You know, get get a name, start using it, or you know, or if you're a developer, contribute code to it, and and join the revolution. Yeah, absolutely. I've been I've been uh, signed up and ha- I have had my uh, .eth address for about a month or two now, and I can definitely Perfect. say it's um, it's the best solution I've seen so far. So, and I don't and I don't expect there to be anything better. So, you know, join the revolution. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again so much for coming on. I'm sure people learned a lot, and uh, I'll probably end up doing another walk through through ens um on my channel for people to go and check out again i've also done one previously and i'll link that in the description as well but uh yeah thanks so much for for coming on and sharing perfect thanks for having me on awesome cheers